Hello, I'm Stephen Hartley, Banbury, UK. Okay, I'm going to make a long video, and it's going to be long, but it's going to be complete, and um, it's going to be all about what's going on in the world. Um, there's a couple of reasons for making this video, and um, one of them is, um, as uh, some of my family members and friends are beginning to be worried about me, they think I'm going mad, and I, because I suppose I come out with things and when they just hear one thing it seems a bit extreme, but I tell them that, um, you know, I, there's a, if they knew everything I knew, then they would be thinking the same as me. But it's not as if I know one specific thing that I can just give them a sentence and that will explain it all. Mainly because, you know, we're left sort of just being able to pick out bits of information. But, um, so anyway, I'm going to make this video and hopefully it's going to put everything in place. So friends and family members can, if they're concerned about my mental health, they can watch it and I can perhaps reach people anywhere in the world who might um, find this useful as well. Okay. Okay, here we go. Now uh, I just want you all to um, relax and um, just have an open mind. Try and forget what you kind of know or think you know and um, kind of oversee the human population and the earth and all that is contained solar system as if you've just visited from another solar system. Okay, let's start right from the beginning. Um, well, no, in fact, let's not, because if we try and make a beginning of something that's always existed then we're not going to be able to fathom that and in a sense we are all infinite beings not our bodies they die but we have a soul and that soul will live forever and is therefore never began but we are here and we do exist so careful not to dwell too much on the thoughts that we don't exist because we do and dwelling on that other thought well that's that's the abyss so don't go there my advice have a quick look over the edge but get back quick because uh, it's not it's not good so, we have this logical universe, it's perfect, okay, it is perfect in a sense that everything happens for a reason, energy is transferred, everything within the universe is logical, those four dimensions. But as mathematics has proved, on the quantum level, there are more dimensions. But we're not really talking about that, but that's, you know, sleep and death and everything else. But our universe is logical. And as we know, there are, there was some possibly big expansion event or a slow drip drip expansion event or as I like to think it just sort of expands and contracts and we're in an expansion state at the moment in the universe now our solar system orbiting the galaxy and there's a big black hole in the center 
the Milky Way. But this maintains its shape and structure. And near the middle, there are massive stars, you know, hundred times bigger than than our sun. They don't live very long in terms of our sun. They burn up quickly. They lose mass. They explode. They're ejecting new stuff out. There's new life being created. And loads of stuff going on. Now, 200 million years ago, something changed in our solar system. And another mini solar system was coming careering towards our solar system and it um, came into the orbit and well and created a big elliptical orbit so at one end of its orbit it's very close to the Sun but on the other end of the orbit it goes out for miles but it itself is a mini solar system Okay, the battery just ran out, but I think I was saying it is a mini solar system. It has um, a red dwarf sun star at the centre of it. Well, I'd say centre, but um, I think there's something else we need to be aware of here as well. The, the sun isn't just sitting there doing nothing, as if you look at a picture of our solar system you will see the the sun and then rings around with the planets now they're not as flat as as supposed by um, <laughs> modern modern assumptions um, because the sun is is hurtling around a galaxy that's doing it's going pretty fast um, so there's going to be some drag. I mean, this gravitational force that keeps us in orbit of the sun kind of isn't like a steel bar, you know. As the sun's moving, the, the planets behind are a little bit behind. And the same with, with this mini solar system Nibiru coming in. And probably because of its elliptical orbit, as it comes nearer to the sun it's accelerating in speed and therefore those planets are going to be a little way back from it as it's careering in okay so we're calling this um, mini solar system we're just calling it Nibiru that's what I'm calling it it's also called planet X um, and maybe some of these planets associated with it, with it Elenin, Elenin, um, Ison, now I'm seeing Nemesis as well, but um, just call it uh, Nibiru, I think. And if I didn't mention it, its orbit is 3,600 years long. That's the information got from the Sumerian tablets. Okay, so bring in history up a bit. Um, let's let's look at around sort of nineteen thousand years ago. Humans at this stage were pretty human looking. Um, they were hunter gatherers. So just like uh, other apes are today, they're in their little tribes, their goal is to find their food and um, stay in their community. And yeah, 19,000 years ago I think we were making um, arrows out of flint stone and we were pretty, pretty okay. We were 
um, pretty clever and we even com communicated between other tribes would sort of leave um, things hanging on trees with sort of bits sort of saying you know perhaps what sort of obviously wasn't written in English it was just done with sort of symbols like maybe you'd stick a bird feather there and that would mean this type of bird was good to eat or um, I don't know <laughs> but there were some you know it seemed like good stuff anyway so um, this would be a few Nibiru orbits ago the we'll call them Anunnaki the Anunnakis and that translated means those from above and that word comes from the Sumerians as well they um, visited Earth and they had spaceships um, capable of visiting Earth and it looks like they wanted some of the um, minerals from Earth I don't think they really wanted to take over Earth or live on Earth uh, it's quite possible the sun's like a bit too bright for them or something. You know, they're used to this sort of red dwarf. It's very, you know, Earth probably very alien to them. So, um, but they visit us and presumably they're able to breathe and, and stuff like that. And, you know, they're probably not that different from us. Uh, different colour eyes, maybe. Like, maybe they had blue eyes. Whereas we all had brown eyes at that time. Quite possibly. Anyway, they visit us and they have far superior technology. And so any of us humans witnessing them would be amazed and astounded and would um, think of them as gods and so am I going here at the moment so now I'm just giving you the theory at the moment I'm not not going to explain all the bits yet so this is just the sort of the history if you like okay so that's when they first visited us. Now, over the next couple of orbits, it does seem as this new discovery of theirs to be able to travel to this other planet caused some sort of ruckus amongst them and leading to a war amongst the Anunnaki. And here I could just say quickly, you know, you think of um, things we have in the past, in the Bible, sort of, wasn't it, Michael was the sort of a really good sort of fighter, and all these names are mentioned, these specific names. Um, and I think this is also what, you know, where sort of Satan comes in, and the devil, the beast in a sense is quite possibly the aggressor in this war um, amongst the Anunnaki and it's quite possible that you know the aggressor wants to take over Earth um, they figure they can live on Earth um, and so that's where the, you know, but I think, you know, the, the good Anunnaki saying, well, no, you know, we don't take over other planets. There's a, there are beings already on this planet, the animals and the bird, everything. You know, it's their planet. So we shouldn't do that. You know, they, they probably did feel it was okay to interact and even, in fact, give us good teachings which I've, I've talked about before anyway okay so then 
then what I think's happened is like the good guys have won the war um, but um, without sort of killing this Satan beast creature thing person they imprison him on the earth and that's kind of what I reckon happened 3,600 years ago okay so that bit isn't fact but this is kind of my theory and understanding most of this is going to be just factual okay and I'll mention it when it's not factual right so advancing forward in history so 3,600 years ago this beast gets trapped on the earth um, you know about this time or probably starting sort of 6,000 years ago you know humans being influenced by good or bad Anunnaki um, start to change slightly and we're farming and we're living in cities now I believe at this point that is a mistake in our evolution alright but I have talked about that before so I'm just going to move through the history so if anyone can bear listening to this <laughs> I don't know right so the advancement of Nibiru then if, if it visited 3600 years ago and if that was in about 16 1700 BC which is the belief of um, Zachariah Sitchin that that is indeed the case that the last time it was here there's events you can read up on um, I will probably bring them up later on I don't have them in my head I've got to search them. but I've watched them I've seen them so then Nibiru would be here today right now most of us are going to say just say no way <laughs> if it was here we'd know right well maybe maybe not right about 300 years ago um, scientists and things noticed that earth's magnetic field began to weaken and this worried them because they knew that the magnetic field shields us shields us from the solar rays of the Sun and so they're worried why would it start to weaken I don't know how much it weakened it was not that much but just noticed that it had started to weaken and that has continued the Earth's magnetic field has continued to weaken still got strength but it's continuing to weaken now 300 years ago if planet Nibiru was on a 3600 year orbit so uh, 1800 years would take it all the way out so then it would be 1500 years out of 1800 years on its way back so it would be getting close okay now I imagine you know the speed of Nibiru is going to be much much faster when it's near the Sun than when it's far away so not that close but close close enough to start causing an influence and one thing about Nibiru is said is you know the magnetics of it are strong then a hundred years ago about a hundred years ago our pole shift began to change in a sense that the pole has always moved around a bit but it began to go in a certain sort of direction or wobble you know just started to sort of happen a bit more okay and then I'm going to bring us up to sort of 1950s now this is when we started to have UFOs visiting UFO sightings so now 
50 years ago, no, say 70 years ago, yeah, 65, um, Nibiru would be, if it was due now to be here now, then 70, 60 years ago, it would be pretty close. Perhaps, you know, close enough for them to start visiting us on small UFOs. And it's my theory that they would have been visiting us, warning the governments that um, what's going to happen. Firstly, that there's going to be a, a massive mini solar system coming into our solar system, um, but that this time there was going to be no no planets were going to crash into another planet, but you know it's obviously going to cause effects. Um, let's look at the what's predicted in the Bible. You know you've, you've got your weather events, your volcanoes, your earthquakes, and all that sort of stuff. And um, who knows what else they told them. But we did start getting UFO sightings at that time, Area 51 was in that time. Okay, now, and so, you know, what, what the governments did with that information at that point is, is a big thing to talk about, but I'm... I'm so I'm just trying to skip through the history a bit quickly at this point. All right, let's um, we'll bring it up to sort of when I sort of get an interested in this sort of stuff. Um, I've always been interested in unsolved mysteries from a young age. My grandma telling me once about the Bermuda Triangle. And I always thought from that stage, you know, Uncovering these mysteries is something that I would like to, you know, do. Be interesting. And in the, uh, in sort of 1994, 5, 6, I, uh, I, I started really looking into, um, things. I had this, uh, I had these maps from the Daily Mail. That like little booklet maps of all over the UK, and one of the interesting things they had was prehistoric sites were all marked on them in a little red with a red stone. So I started visiting these prehistoric sites, and one thing I noticed there was loads around all around the area, Stonehenge and everything else. And then I look on a, on a map and the whole Salisbury Plains is kind of whited out. And it just says, Danger Area. <laughs> and it's right in the middle of these, all these sort of ancient sites. And, um, who knows, perhaps perhaps governments and things got the warning Yeah, a hundred years ago, hundred and twenty years ago. Maybe they knew what was gonna happen and I don't know how long Salisbury Plains has been in existence. I know quite a long time. It's the officers training area. Anyway, so I was getting interested in this and crop circles were quite a big thing at this time. And I was convinced, well, I still am, that the crop circles were made by UFOs. And I think the reason they were doing it was because they had warned the government, but the government hadn't warned us, so they were doing something to warn us. And, um, and crop circles may be a phenomenon anyway when um, these UFOs are using some sort of portal to to get to this planet a little shortcut 
but then then they then used it as a tool to to make more elaborate ones like just say a normal circle that would be what a UFO creates when it when it uses a portal to get to us um, so yeah so these crop circles in the 1990s were very interesting and I'd go there in, in my car or whatever I was trying to work it out then always been trying to work it out now I wanted to just tell you about this crop circle that there was in 2002 there was an alien face and he was holding a, what looked like a compact disc and the compact disc had very intricate um, points on it and it was a message and um, that message said sorry excuse me that message said beware the bearers of false gifts and their broken promises much pain but still time e l r i g e e l r i j u e there is good out there we oppose deception conduit closing and then what's in brackets the bell sound I think that's a very, very interesting crop circle. I mean, the ones that we had sort of from 1996 with done a DNA helix and everything. They've done loads more. I'm still yet to find anyone who's who's um, understood what all these mean. Although the person I think is best at it is he's got the YouTube channel is 2012 the date and he's the crop circles from around last few years anyway he has decoded showing that they're 3d and so he would be the best I'd love him to go through all the old crop circles and say what they mean but maybe there isn't time <clears throat> okay so that was in 2002 now, conduit closing, I took it at the time to mean that they wouldn't be able to visit for a while. But I don't know. I'm not going to go into that. Okay, then now the next thing on the timeline for me will be 2007 to sort of 2009. I think I certainly sort of clicked on again in 2009. And... <clears throat> But it may have been going on for a bit longer. But at that point, we were getting things were beginning to happen. But UFO sightings or sightings in the sky were just amazing. Um, and you know that's when chemtrails were in good effect as well. Um, harp stuff going on. The weather was going crazy sort of things started to get going crazy at that point so that was 2009 now Nibiru would have been in range then in sight and I think that's when the alien war began because this beast who was imprisoned in the earth has either got out or in a sort of an advanced way is able to manipulate people here but he's probably out and his aim is to war with the incoming Anunnaki continue the war that was going on 3,600 years ago and you know this is the the worry is that 
the East has been able to convince all the world leaders here that those are the bad guys and that he's maybe the good guy or I don't know just corrupted them and um, has power over them okay so that is the the um, a brief history okay I've written a list here of um, all the strange elements well it might not be all of them but I've run out of paper <laughs> it's all the ones I've thought of over the last 24 hours okay I'm just going to read the list so just so you can appreciate so all these words are kind of anomalies or things, facts, that I will argue all support the brief history I've just given you. Okay, this is just a list. 20,000 nukes, chemtrails, pole shift magnetics, pyramids and ancient relics, Sumerians, coronal hole on the sun, sinkholes, dying fish, earthquakes, volcanoes, animals decline extinction, human population, nuclear energy, World War Three, harp, global warming, crop circles, God religion, precision of predictions in Bible, UFOs, Zachariah Sitchin, Devil is clever. Okay, it was just a list. Okay, I'm just going to go down this list now in, in the order I just read it. Um, okay, so it's not very well organised. Here we go. All right. Okay, there's twenty thousand nukes, nuclear weapons on this planet that we know about. Um, America have got 7,500, Russia have got 8,800, and China was thought to have 300, but actually they've got about 3,300. And France got a few hundred, England's got a few hundred, India and Pakistan, they've got about 100 each. Now, there was some um, America and Russia, they did get rid of some, didn't they? But I bet they only got rid of the old crappy ones. Kept all their best ones. Now, let's say if you had a hundred nukes, like India or Pakistan. A um, hundred nuclear weapons, surely that's enough to take out a continent. And any of them know that if you fired a hundred nukes into a continent, um, you're going to fuck the whole world up. <laughs> right? Right? Because, you know, they, they did two in Japan, didn't they? Hiroshima. Um, you know, and that sort of caused quite a lot of devastation around the area, but would have surely put a lot of radioactive in the air. And, you know, it's, it's poison, isn't it, really? It's, it's devastation. Um, so you put 100 nukes into somewhere, well, you you know, you're going to devastate a whole continent. Um, and that's going to have effects on the Earth. So, or even 200, so you decimate two continents. Okay, it's enough to f fuck the world up. So why would you ever need more than a thousand nuclear weapons? Why would you ever need more than that? It's a bit, it's a bit ridiculous, isn't it? I mean... <laughs> It's crazy until you think of another possibility, which is the history I've just given you, the beast planning a war against an incoming race civilization. Um, now maybe you want 10,000, 20,000 nukes because, yeah, maybe you want to sort of completely decimate an entire planet. Um, hopefully the, the, it'll, it'll never have a chance and 
at the Anunnaki have anticipated this and um, have a good response, hopefully. Um, or maybe he's, maybe they're being used as a sort of a ransom. Ah. Sorry, I only just thought of that. Like a, using their, those nukes, like it's like a gun t to the hostage's head. <laughs> I almost have to pause this now and think. I will. Oh, I didn't think for long, but that that is that is you know a worrying thought in the sense that he's saying leave us alone or I'm gonna I'm gonna nuke the whole um, earth. All right, moving on to the next one on the list. Chemtrails. Chemtrails has been the biggest pain in my ass for the last few years. I hate them. Absolutely, I hate them. Okay, they seem to stay up in the air, but some of the shit must come down. And there's shit in them aluminium and barium, nano sized particles. They they've ruined our summers <laughs> annoying they i mean they they may have been protecting us from solar winds i mean the thing about chemtrails is there's so many theories as to what they are there's so many possibilities i think the main three are to poison us to to shield us from solar radiation to stop us seeing anything in the sky and this is a big one this is the one that supports my theory and that of course you know if Nibiru is already here and perhaps you know since 2009 would have been quite visible in different parts um, they'd want to cover that up and if they know exactly where it's coming in and everything else and they know where the earth is going to be they can say right well we need chemtrails here and here in this month and because they don't always do it so much you know sometimes it's always been a bit there's always the odd one but it's yeah you know, sometimes it's like just so full on um, so and then the then so then the other theory is um, that if they have this layer of nano-sized particles in the atmosphere, they can actually make the sky like a like a projection, a hol holograms you can make things appear in the sky. I'm an open-minded guy, so that's possible too. So maybe they're lovely chemtrails that they love them um, are multifaceted that they have multiple reasons for them um, but I really hate them I wish they weren't there I can actually remember the sky before they were there clouds are nice and crisp and the air was fresh and good to breathe unless you were in a city and it wasn't but I always liked the smell of leaded petrol I'm sure it wasn't good for me but I did like the smell I hate diesel ugh hate it diesel fumes I mean petrol fumes these days you can barely smell um, but um, well you can when you're at the pumps but they're not as smelly as diesels diesels do stink Right, I mean, chemtrails, you know, is a bit of a big one. I'm going to move on. Okay, the next one on my list is pole shift and magnetics. I did already touch on that in the uh, in the um, brief history, but um, you know, this is very interesting and really does support the fact that there is a large object in our solar system which is aff affecting the poles and the magnetics and at this moment it's very very strong 
There's a guy, a YouTuber called Astral Traveller, I mentioned before, and he's been monitoring all of these machines that the um, monitors that the NASA have and everything. And they're very good of it, good of them to let let us see as well. But every now and then they nick, cut something out. Well, they have control over what we get to see anyway. You know, there's stuff taking away our magnetics. As you can see, it's sort of drawing it away. And some points it does, some points it doesn't. But it seems to have something which will latch on, suck out a load of electrons and protons from our atmosphere and leave us susceptible to the radiation from the sun. Um, this has happened, and you can see the graphs. I'll try and put a picture up um, where you see the radiation levels um, on Earth that have made it through. Now, most flares and things actually strengthen our magnetic shield. We need flares to strengthen our shield. So sort of gives it some protons and electrons and makes it stronger again. Um, but when when our magnetic shield is taken away and then we get a solar flare then the radiation hits the ground and a big one a big solar flare would cause havoc uh, when X20 is called the kill shot I believe and would take out all the grid and everything alright moving on because I suppose anyone listening to this is probably pulling their hair out <laughs> Pyramids and ancient relics. Right, so obviously we know, you know who built them. I mean, there's pyramids all over the place, and there's some, you know, huge ones in South America. I mean, and it's not all pyramids, but some buildings are made with hundred-ton stones that are cut exactly, slot in, fit exactly. You can't even get, you know, a hair's width in between them. There's Stonehenge, so you know we know there's been some sort of alien influence before. Okay, and that brings me on to Sumerians. Okay, when well, I mentioned this also, Zachariah Sitchin has been able to read all of the tablets that the Sumerians made. So tablets, piece of clay, they scratch into it, they write stuff, they dry it out, and it lasts for a long time, thousands of years. Now they had a lot of information about the stars and they had, this is where we mentioned the Anunnaki, they just, which means those from above and they were sort of living sort of amongst them and, and we've also got their, um, how they say how the Anunnaki found the human woman very attractive and we had mix and these apparently are called Nephilim so the product, the children of these women who had had sex with an Anunnaki were called Nephilim and Goliath, he was a Nephilim they're big, big people um, and they probably at some point thought they would better than, better than everyone else and wanted to conquer, conquer the earth but um, I think they were defeated Right, so, but the fact, the fact, it still remains that the Sumerians had this superior knowledge for their, for their civilization's time, which was something like 6,000 years ago, I think, or something like that, and maybe it was 3,600 years ago, that the Sumerians, a bit longer, I think, they were um, for a couple of orbits, all right, but we will go into that a bit more with Zachariah Sitchin later. Coronal hole of the sun. Okay. Now, you can look on things like Helio Viewer, and there's plenty of people who do videos. Sub Suspicious Observers um, is the main one, and they'll talk about coronal holes. Now, as I understand it, and I haven't gone into too much depth with this, but... The coronal hole is normally at the poles of the sun. Um, you've got the magnetic energy of, of a planet or a sun or whatever. 
what you see is a little circle in the middle which is the planet or the sun and then the energy is coming out the top of the poles going all around the side and then in through the bottom poles and this is sort of magnetic energy now so the coronal holes of the sun are supposed to be at the poles now what's been happening is that these coronal holes have been kind of opening along the side of the sun and different areas it almost looks like it's like pulling it apart and so that to me would suggest again a, a large object within our solar system heavy which is affecting the sun um, like nothing else and all our planets all the planets in the solar system have had been having some strange effects over the last 10 years um, you know Jupiter's red spot went changed and moved and went somewhere else and um, Mars had some I think was it major earthquakes or something and there's a lot of evidence for it this whatever it is is affecting everything in the solar system including the Sun with these coronal holes okay you're still listening well done um, I just had to have a quick bite to eat maybe you could too right on with the list okay the next one is sinkholes and earth expansion right okay there's an earth expansion theory which if you look it up there's a 10 minute and 2 second video watch that then if you feel so inclined watch something on plate tectonics and I can tell you the earth expansion theory is much more credible than the plate tectonics our continents do not slide around <laughs> slide around on the planet like a an egg in a frying pan not that that slides around but you get the picture okay they're not sliding around that's ridiculous and if you watch the plate tectonic video when they do their because they do this I suppose sort of you know was Pangaea expanded and then it came back together and spread out again um, if you if you watch when they think two plates are sort of going into each other and one slides under the other one it's just such bollocks watch earth expansion theory it, the earth has been expanding the last 200 million years <laughs> and you can tell this from the age of the ocean floor the oldest part of the ocean floor is 200 million years old then it you know goes through stages um, I mean you can see it on the, st the main bars if you like every sort of 50 60 million years but I don't know if it's sort of a gradual thing, if it's happening all the time, or if it comes in massive bursts. Um, I mentioned this to my brother, he's pretty clever, physics and everything. And he said, well, you know, I could, I could accept that, but where's the mass coming from? There has to be some extra mass or heat. So, well, you know, Nibiru, mini solar system coming in, um, is going to heat up the Earth because of the gravitational effects of it pulling and pushing we know how that's how um, moons on moons orbiting Saturn and things have extra heat from this sort of movement as they're compressing and everything that causes heat so causes eventually earth expansion and then when Nibiru flicks around the sun and goes off it's going to leave a massive tail with debris and we could get some extra mass from that debris or the earth might cool again and it's even more a gradual process than, than I thought but we have got evidence of earth expansion um, the Japanese earthquake in 2011 ripped uh, a crevasse in the crust 150 miles long 15 miles wide <laughs> and we can see it I can see it around the roads around where I live um, you can see cracks and some might be subsidence but you can see where things have sort of torn apart a bit but the main ones are going to be in the ocean in the middle of the Atlantic Rift which runs down the middle of the Atlantic 
and the whole Pacific Rim. Those are going to be your main expansion points. And sinkholes, you know, sinkholes is a relatively new phenomenon. Um, I think the original one was, which would have got that name, was in Guatemala. And, um, you know, they really did start kicking off in the last few few years, but, you know, have got more and more. Now, some people are saying, well, it's, you know, rain washing away the dirt under the road. Yeah, it is, but we've had plenty of heavy rain before. Um, if, if the earth is expanding, sort of from within, and pushes out and, and um, opens up the crust a bit, you know, you're going to have somewhere for the rain to wash that dirt too. It's going to create that. And sort of then the, the rain might make it worse and the rain might also sort of bring it closer to the surface you could have a crack quite deep down but after some rain washes it sort of down and then allows the stuff under the tarmac to form so yeah that's um, sinkholes and earth expansion dying fish dying fish is also related to this in my opinion um, there's a lot of toxins uh, in the mantle and you know poisonous gases and things like that so when the crust rips like that it must allow all this stuff to go into the uh, into the sea and who knows what other effects might be happening but we are certainly seeing a lot of um, you know huge shoals of fish just turning up on the shore dead in lakes too, in deep lakes, you could well have these uh, earth expansion events happening as well. And the dying fish may also be caused by the increased CO2 in the oceans. Um, the warm, the oceans are warming. I'll come into that in a minute. And also general pollution stuff that we may cause as well. But, you know, quite a lot of it is going on. So it is one of these mysteries that needs an explanation. And that I believe is an explanation. Alright, next thing, earthquakes. Right, now, earthquakes have been increasing. Uh, there's a video. I don't know if I might make a link. Six twenty-eight. Um... There was this video I watched over the last 10 years, the, all the earthquakes in the last 10 years. And, you know, you watch this video and then you cannot deny that earthquakes have been increasing. Sort of, I'd say three or fourfold in 10 years. Um, and we've been able to detect earthquakes for many decades. So, you know, it's not... It's not just sort of uh, just the fact that we're able to detect more. It is the fact that there are more. And funnily enough, as well, in the pattern that they go in uh, is just quite interesting. You sort of you'd hear, hear that it'd give the noises and the, the different strengths and everything. It would be sort of little ones like and boom. almost be like that so then that was a big one you know like an eight pointer and then maybe a little bit of quiet just after that and then picking up again um, there's also um, <clears throat> another video well it wasn't it was one of astral travelers is fact it found this model of a where they show the earth and then they show the gravitational effects and again, I think this was over a 10 year period or something. And wow, could you see them ramp up certain parts of the earth just sort of pulling out real big and other bits of the earth like pushing in, like sucking in. And it's, you know, really, but the really interesting. But the, the fact was that, that how it increased the strength of it, how it was pulling. And as the earth is spinning, 
and also going around the sun and Nibiru is coming in you know it's going to affect all different areas of the earth so um, so that that again is evidence towards Nibiru get as it's getting closer these things are getting worse and by the way like I said at the moment Nibiru has has already passed our planetary plane in March 2012 and has sort of gone under and at that point was was quite close and was probably again quite close in uh, April or say but since then it may be getting a little bit further away as it goes back under the sun under the sun but as it's coming back up it's quite possibly going to get quite close sort of to we'll have a few more a ramp up again of these effects my right, next one on the list is volcanoes um, of course again this is sort of linked to the earth expansion as that magma in the earth is heating up pressing up it's obviously blowing a few volcanoes and we're having a lot of volcano activity um, you know a volcanic eruption would would usually make the news um, but there's been quite a few lately and they're not been making the news um, so that kind of goes in line with the earthquakes it seems to be on a similar pattern when there's a lot of earthquakes then we're getting more volcanoes you know I think at the moment there's a volcano there's volcanoes in Italy which are quite uh, active smoking had a couple of eruptions and Mount Etna erupted lately uh, Mexico there's quite a few there's Popo that one is really threatening and has had a few a couple of eruptions um, and, then, and then there's others around the Pacific Rim there's some up in Alaska so earthquakes are definitely active All right I've got the next one on the list is animals decline extinction now the reason I put this down is just wanted to sort of talk about the the fact that sort of we see ourselves not as animals and you know I think this is part of the deception because you know we all love animals on a personal level you ask anyone we love animals and when we see animals and we watch them you know we see that they're not that different from us and it's, it's a sort of it's, it's wrong for us to say oh, we're not animals and to not care about them they're, they're our brothers brothers and sisters on this planet you know we can learn from them as they can learn from us not at the moment so you know we really should give them more credence and the beast he doesn't care about them okay the evil beast doesn't care about animals doesn't care if they go extinct chop down the rainforest come on let's, let's do it get it done whatever come on neighbor is coming I need to fight them I need these minerals I need this we need the economy come on we need technology let's go to go and go don't care about animals let them die who cares but we should because they're our brothers and sisters and I love the animals I was in Africa I saw this last hippo because all the farmers had killed all the other hippos for the farmers for they told to do it or they're beaten up because their crops weren't big enough and the hippo taken up to their crops they pass it on you know everything like this the punishments get passed on don't they I saw this last hippo and I looked and he looked it's a she actually and did get eye contact and I just got this amazing feeling of this hippo and its ancestors being in this area for a long time such a long time you know 
who belong there? Not me. I was on a backpacking trip on my own. This hippo, I just got this feeling and how, you know, just looking at me and associating me with all the other humans or maybe pleading to me <laughs> in a way. You know, look, look at what's happening. You're the last one. Can't carry on when you're the last one. It's sad. The other thing, you know, animals, and this all relates to nature. You know, quite often I'm sitting in my house and I think I should go outside and do something. I kind of almost don't want to, so almost like a trap. But I get outside, and I'm outside, and I'm doing my garden, and I'm really happy. You know, there's life out there. There's a fly here, wasp, spider, beetle. You name it. Loads, loads of them there. I can feel feel real peace and love. Such a nice feeling. But nature has been taken away. Again, this is the beast's will. It's the beast to disconnect us from nature and serve the beast. That's what we've been doing. Um, so, yeah. That's that one. Okay, next one's human population. And again, this is along the same line. The beast doesn't care, right? But we humans, we should have realised, and probably many people did 60, 70 years ago, that the human population was a problem. Well, I mean, World War Two did quite a lot to help reduce the population. Again, the beast's work. Um, but it's not being dealt with, you know, because of economy. Economy. It's like rules everything. It's the greed. That's how the beast has got people to do the, his will. Through the greed. For these nice things you could have. Look at this nice car you could have. Look at this beautiful house you could have. If you're willing to stab all your mates in the back and be a complete bastard, yeah? Human population, you know, should have been curbed a long time ago. Of course now, you know, it's, it's almost too late to kind of just say, will everyone have no more than two kids? It would have to be much, much stricter. Um... But the devil beast, he doesn't care. And I guess, you know, we're, we're due for another population cut. Like World War Two, we're due another one. All right, moving on from that. Okay, next, nuclear energy. Now, we're using nuclear energy. We've been using it for quite a long time. Um, and we're using it without much forethought because of the waste right it's quite clean energy it's quite useful uh, it's good at powering subs to make them quiet and obviously nuclear material is good for nuclear weapons as I've mentioned in the first one just our nuclear energy you know the thing is you've got all these power stations they need to be kept cool so most of them are next to the sea um, <clears throat> to use the sea to cool cool them uh, so if you go swimming near one of these you actually find the water is quite warm because of the nuclear plant but it's the waste issue well, the waste issue and the safety issue uh, you know if you know there's going to be a bloody mini solar system coming around every 3,600 years causing earthquakes, sinkholes and earth expansion 
Probably not a good idea to have all these nuclear power stations on the coast, is it? Japan is still causing a massive problem. Uh, apparently that nuclear waste has probably filled up the entire Pacific Ocean now. And uh, apparently from even from Chernobyl we've got um, strontium-90 in the uh, in, uh, female the female population breasts when they give milk strontium-90 can be found so nuclear energy should never have been approved because they they would have known they knew about half-lives at that time so when this when these um, when they've got what they can from the radioactive material and they need to then put it somewhere, it's waste, um, you know, it's still radioactive and will be for perhaps 10,000 years. So, you know, you can't trust a government in 10,000 years time It's still going to be looking after this waste. I mean, you can't even trust them now. <laughs> so, you know, where's it all going to end up? It's not um, a sustainable way to produce energy. But the devil beast doesn't give a shit. Again, we wouldn't be doing these illogical things if we really had our heads screwed on. And it's, it's the beast at the top who puts pressure on his minions who put pressure on the people that they put in power, who put pressure on their ministers. Actually, they don't do anything, do they, the ministers? Um, but these people in power have all the... Well, they have the power. They have the big businesses. They have the ones who can build nuclear plants. So it's, you know, it's quite easy for them in the end isn't it? It's been going on for a long time. Okay, next on the list, World War Three. Alright, so, this is very interesting, and as I'm not always successful in predicting, <laughs> predicting future events, I'll be a little bit wary. But, you know, we're either going to have a World War Three to cut down the population, but there's so many other things cutting down the population um, but at the moment you know we're right on the brink um, there's stuff on it just today I mean Russia and America they're practically at war because they're on opposing views on Syria and neither of them are backing down Russia will help Assad and the West will help the Al Qaeda rebels. They're going to give them loads of um, weapons and things, but you see, I think this is possibly something else, and kind of goes back to that twenty thousand nukes. Thing. Now, are they preparing to fire at the home planet of the Anunnaki? Are they all gathering in, in one place to be a, a strong unit against against the incoming Anunnaki? Well, so I'm not going to talk about that too much because it's, <clears throat> it's in the future, uh, sort of now. So we haven't got long. We can just wait and see. Okay, next on the list is Harp. Right. Um... I don't know an awful lot about this. I do know enough that it's to do with um, heating up parts of the ionosphere that can have effects on the weather and stuff like that. Now there are some people that just say, oh harp, you know, that's the cause of everything. It's causing all the tornadoes, all the earthquakes, and stuff like that. But no, I don't buy that at all. Um, 
I think I think they can use it to um, to create a lower pressure and maybe might be able to bring on an earthquake sooner than it would have done and I think you know it might help them sort of organize all that stuff they're spraying in the air the chemtrails so that they could use that maybe to create a sort of a, a more constant grid of stuff but you know as I said you know I haven't read that much about it but um, yeah I'm sure it's doing something but it's not it's not the cause of everything that's going on no way it's not that powerful all right now I'm going to move on oh yeah I was going to say about the the harp you know sort of some people say a cause of climate change and global warming um, the harp is, is not able to heat up the oceans and it is the oceans which is heating up more than anything they are causing the disruption because of course the oceans can then heat the air quite easily but the air can't heat the oceans so easily uh, the sun shining down on the oceans is going to heat it up a bit true um, but I think it's the more of the case of it's being heated from the ground up alright so moving on oh next one is global warming in the seas okay <laughs> Ah, uh, okay, this is getting quite tiring. Um, okay, I'm going to move on. I might come back to it. All right, I'll move on to crop circles. I did mention these in the brief history. Um, I just say basically, you know, if crop circles were hoaxes, what are they a hoax of? Do you see what I mean? If they're copying something then the original something must be something okay but you just have to look at them the best place to go is to type in Lucy Pringle and her website she's been photographing them it goes way back um, there's none for 2013 it seems but I think that's because they're not in England anymore crop circles now are turning up in France and Italy and places like that we're not really don't seem to be getting them in England um, yeah and if you look at is 2012 the date he does some very good crop circle uh, just de describing what they mean but I, I did talk about that didn't I? I I think crop circles are great oh did I say about the one with the, uh, the CD message yes Okay, moving on. God and religion. Okay, as I think I said before as well, if we humans, about 20,000 years ago, we saw someone flying on a spaceship, we'd think they were God, wouldn't we? So, and you can see around the world <clears throat> the sort of. I think, you know, ever since I was born, I'm sure I knew about the subconscious. And that I'm a soul, and not just not just a a body of bones and carbon. And that we are all infinite beings. I think that knowledge is within us all. If you see a baby, sometimes the way a baby looks at you, it's an all-knowing look. And Bob Marley sung in one of his songs, "The biggest man I ever did see was." when he was a baby in his life and I think it's such a shame that we we squeeze it out of the children it's such a shame it's wrong teaching see it comes from the beast we teach them what we were taught it's almost like you know we've got to get them prepared for a crap life or try and prevent them having a crap life to make sure they're sort of a few rungs up on the ladder still be a crap life crap empty life that you don't know that you're an infinite being 
and that you have contact to your subconscious you have the access to everything there is to know you got to get good at it and I'm not that good at it obviously because I go on YouTube to find out stuff but it is there it's all we all we need is there and you can of course you can t have telepathy with people you can I do it it's primitive the best quick way to explain it is do this imagine a pencil a pen or a pencil that you have just put it in your mind imagine that pencil okay so there's your brain imagining something but something that you know about so you can picture it now the subconscious information will be deeper than that it won't be as clear as that image of the pen in your mind it's sort of it's deeper than that it's sort of at the almost at the I always think it's almost at the at the back <laughs> and you just have to learn how to do it you got to meditate first usually or be a very in a very relaxed state and then just ask a question anything and the thing how you can recognize the subconscious is it comes very quickly it's like splat it's there and then a couple of seconds after that your imagination kicks in you probably change it because your brain says well that came so quick that can't be right it's the way we're conditioned to think okay so I was on God and religion so you know you know we've got writings I've read the Bible I've read the Quran I've read the Old Testament all of it and it's some pretty fascinating wisdom in all of those books and you definitely get the impression especially in the Old Testament when God is walking around and stuff you know it's not it's not the God it's not the one God but I think I think they gave us the right guidance that's how they guided us so, all right okay these people think we're gods okay let's just for the moment let them think that and now we tell them how they should live there how they should live what are good ways and there is some fantastic wisdom in there so that was good guidance and also is that's where we get the story of the beast and the beast with a number 666 and that has been interpreted uh, apparently the Anunnaki would have um, numbers associating to names and 600 is associated with the Anunnaki the people 60 is associated with the name Anu and 6 is associated with the name Adad so that would say name is Adad son of Anu of the Anunnaki 666 is the number of the beast and the beast was locked up down here da -da 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 -da. go into that in a minute precision this is the next on the list precision of predictions in the Bible okay so what I'm saying about this and how this relates to Nibiru is that you know the one thing if you could say this is definitely going to happen again you are going to have a lot of earthquakes volcanoes plagues pestilence you know because of the weather and the, the upsetting of the weather will lead to droughts in some places and floods in other places and you know this thing with plagues and everything well you know if you get those sort of conditions you know abnormal conditions then suddenly something can something that's been on this earth for ages <laughs> can suddenly do really well and you have a plague so and these things were predicted so the one thing that you could if you knew that 
definitely going to happen. Well, like an orbiting planet, solar system, mini solar system. If it's on an orbit, you know it's going to come again, don't you? And there's, you, we've got the revelations, right, at the end of the New Testament. Back in the Old Testament, there was a lot of very similar talk. Same sort of stuff, almost what's made me think the revelations was made up and just copied. Well, maybe it isn't. Maybe it's true. But anyway, so in the so in the Old Testament, there was all this talk of this stuff happening. And then it did. And while it was happening, it was Ezekiel. And he writes about these craft in the sky and they were fighting I think they were warring and you know a lot of other things mentioned uh, it's been a year <coughs> it's been a while since I've read that so but but what there is is there's this definite well this is going to happen you know and by and large and look here we are 2013 and all this stuff is happening Okay, next on the list, well, UFOs. I think I've actually covered that now, haven't I? Well, I did in the brief history. I went through UFOs. They seem to have started in around 1950, when Nibiru was near enough for them to travel over. Uh, and then they've just, well, they haven't gone away. They might have gone. There might have been an absence of them in between, and little periods when maybe they weren't able to get here, because there was one of the predict. One of the things they said in their crop circle, the conduit is closing. That was like it was almost like a warning, wasn't it? You know, they're not going to. The pain is still to come and stuff like that. And well, yeah. I mean, there's pain going on now. I've got to say, if you're living in the UK, just, you know, things might seem pretty normal. But things are obviously not normal in around the world, where the, the world is falling apart. You just have to kind of imagine you live there. Say, India, for example, and you live near the Ganges and saw all these houses falling into the Ganges. Or, or in Turkey or Syria, you know, or you lived in Iraq, yeah. Okay, and uh, I'm going to say now about Zachariah Sitchin. I mean, this guy has written six, seven books on this, and he's the one who translated the <laughs> translated the um, Sumerian tablets. Um, and I listened to about an hour long talk from him and he's put all his you know he's put it all across everyone's convinced that this is true you know there's this Nibiru and the Anunnaki and everything else and that they've been to earth and visited earth and they've had an effect on us and they've you know mixed with us you blue eyed people which is most of us probably carry the gene it's no big deal it's in all of us um, and, and then towards the end of his talk you know then the talk is comes to the question comes well, you know did it, have any of them stayed behind <laughs> well yeah you'd think so wouldn't you and then he said well that's my last book that's a bit you know that's a bit sort of a scary one and you know, because he'd said, you know, there was in these Sumerian tablets, they there was a quarrel amongst themselves. So you've got a warring, a warring species, and some of them got left here. And look at the strange part that humanity has taken over the last few thousand years 
See, I think, go back 6,000 years, I don't think we should have started farming, growing one crop, an abundance of one crop, in a sense. I think that was a mistake, in it because if you just eat eight bread, so like you eat the bread and your tummy's full, you think, wow, here we go, it's all we need, that filled me up, yeah, without realizing that you know maybe that bread you ate didn't have all the nutrients and everything else. And it plays very much into the beast's hand because there you are satisfied that you are full yet you know you are going to be dumbed, dumbed down if you just eat bread your brain is not going to get the essential oils and amino acids it needs you'll have energy because there's carbohydrates you know you'll have a bit of protein whatever but you ain't getting those amino acids, those fats, and they come from fish. So you have fish and bread. Well, that's better. Okay. That's a better diet. But anyways, there's, you know, we would have had much better diets when we're just sort of walking around scavenging fruit, vegetables, roots. Uh, you know the uh, where do we get potatoes from? The South South Americans. I mean, they were growing potatoes. I don't think they were growing them in fields and farms. They just, you know, they would recognise a potato. You can you can see the leaf. Dig up, dig up the roots. So anyway, we would have been better off without farming, I think, and we would have been better off not being in cities. Um, you know, it seems like the cities and the farming came in together. And this is where the beast could sit at the top of his Babylon Tower, have his few people, his few minions that he orders around, but they order their minions around and so forth. And the majority of us are on the bottom two layers, and we were either servants or farmers or whatever, or, or labourers. To build their to build their buildings. So, right, my last one on the list here to all support the correct theory that Nibiru is a mini solar system in a binary system with our sun and is currently in our solar system, in our inner solar system, crossed between the uh, across the orbital plane between Mars and Jupiter that's why there used to be a planet there called Ceres and that may be one that may have been one of the first victims and also the fact that our moon is, is kind of too big for the size of the planet we shouldn't have a moon that big and that may have also been a cause of <coughs> the binary star system that we live in and currently it crossed the plane on March 2012 in between Mars and Jupiter and is currently kind of down underneath the Sun ready to come back up or maybe it's coming back up maybe it's been behind the Sun yeah because Astral Traveller was very young he said he didn't know what speed it was really going and really just uh, you know, who's only able to sort of guess. And yet we say, you know, you say, well, how come we haven't seen it then? Because they've been very clever. And that is my next point. The devil is clever. That is a statement that I heard, and I, I kind of seem to remember it's written in the Bible. Now, I think, I don't know, whether the beast was locked up and got out, whether he's been able to, within his mind, um, with his mind he's been able to sort of corrupt people. But 
let me just suppose a theory here that we had a thing called the Dark Ages in the 1400s. The Dark Ages. And I was at a healing festival so a month or so ago. And we had this talk with an interdimensional wizard. <laughs> we had a really good talk. And towards the end of it, he did a he did a sort of a past life thing on me. It was quite basic. He just he just sort of you know said right in a minute I'm going to ask you a question. Da, 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 da. And he just sort of said uh, when was the last time you were happy? Or tell me the last time you were feeling pleasure. And I said oh, I was sort of dancing in the tent earlier, and that was pleasure. And I ex and I described what I could see. You know obviously looking at the floor quite a lot when I'm dancing but <laughs> not depressingly just you know there you are I was sort of saying about the music bouncing off the floor anyway the carpet was red and you know so I'm saying what I can see he said okay now now um, go back to he said 1576 and funnily enough I just said well in 15, 1576 that just reminds me of a dream that I had a few years years ago. I had three dreams, which made me believe in past lives anyway. And each dreams are very, very real. So I said, well, I've kind of, I've, 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 I'm feeling that my dream is around then. So probably best to do another time. He goes, okay, go back to a time before that when you last felt pleasure. Because I said at this time there was warring and there was a castle and everything. And I just went 1402, and and I in my mind I knew I was like really young, like really young, like two or something. And I was looking up at uh, a woman, I assume it was my mother. And she had her arms folded, wearing a long sort of a like a grey cloak coat thing, looked thick, and it had a hood. And she was just looking out as if sort of assessing, you know, you, you're sort of standing on the porch of your house, say, just sort of looking out of the land. And, you know, that's interesting because he said the last time you had pleasure sort of thing. So, you know, at that time, I don't know where I was, if I was in England or not, so at that time then, you know, it is when the Dark Ages were supposed to have come in. And, you know, so just as a possible sort of theory, without going on too much, the um, the beast may well have broken out of his prison, aided by who knows what, someone curious, maybe, in... I'd say 1100 because there's also something else interesting that happens in 1100 and that is a group of Uzbeks who were who who had taken on the um, the Jewish religion were started laying claim to Israel Now, you know, Israel and Jerusalem definitely you know, seems to be something about that place, doesn't it? And the beast may, may well seek that place. And so if that did happen back then, and he started to be able to wield his power because he was freed, And we get the Dark Ages, as he sort of grows and grows in power, and then his then his wishes. Once he has his power base, and he's clever. He knows how to corrupt people. He knows how to control things. He knows that they need to develop the technology. Then we get 
you know, and around this time, the um, the uh, the Ark of the Covenant. Is that was the proper name for it? You know, the the Ark, the Raiders of the Lost Ark, that one, not Noah's Ark. But the Ark of the Covenant, this sort of war machine, as it was. And I heard a coast to coast on this. And the guy who's done the most research, if you like, he believes that it was it was gunpowder and perhaps the instructions of how to make gunpowder. But anyway, whatever it was, it um, it kind of got lost around that time, around either 1300 or 1600 was when the the ark kind of got lost and so then we get to 1600 and now you've got the British um, Empire and their ships also in the 1400s is when the Portuguese were traveling the world in their ships so there's a new bit of technology coming on Someone got this idea to make this ship that could then go exploring the world. Explore and conquer. In the 1600s, you know, you've got all these navies. And in a sense, you know, wars... Wars produce the technology, don't they? That is true. And there was someone who said that the Jews had started every single war in history. Now, I don't know what evidence they have for that. But let's just carry on with this little suspicion, su su supposition without all the facts, but it's just fun, isn't it? So, 1600s, you've got these... You know, they're getting on for warships, aren't they? They've got cannons. We've got this gunpowder. It's destructive force. We can go to new lands and... <laughs> now, we're... Now, they think we're gods. It's the devil's doing the beast. This is his doing. He's putting the pressure. He put the pressure. And armies, the you know, the fundamental thing when you join the army. Take orders without question. It's a good system, isn't it? Take orders without question and the rest of history you know you probably know as well as I do it hasn't been getting any better and the one pursuit has been technology and I think if you ask most people these days it's gone too far we don't need any more technology we're dying we're dying we're apes we don't need all this technology. We need, we need to, we need good food, good food that's grown without pesticides and fertilizers. That's high in nutrition, varied diet. You get vegetables with oil, avocado and olives. Good source of oil, flaxseed. It's high in omega threes. You know, you've got your omega-3, omega-6. Anyway, we're, we're dying because we're so, so unhealthy. Not as our fault. It's not even our bloody fault. Well, it is, in a sense, it's our fault that we're a bit lazy and ignorant. But we are the, the boiling frog. The frog sitting in the water slowly boiling. That is us. I mean, and the other health things, you know, we don't get enough exercise, we don't get a variety of exercise, we're breathing in fumes, we're breathing in shit, we got all our foods wrapped in highly processed goodness taken out of it, preservatives stuck into it, wrapped in plastic, getting loads of female hormones which probably added to quell the men, cut the men's testosterone down because you know, the devil wants this society to continue and continue um, until he can get his way. 
is the revenge on the um, on the others. Yeah. Right. Finished with the list now, and finished with this theory. Um, I did want to sort of spend a bit of time disbanding some other theories, which I just I just don't seem to be able to think of them. Um, there's one which is very close. Well, suspicious observers I've asked him about Nibiru. He doesn't buy it. He says, no, there's no way it would be here without me seeing it. I'd know. i got, I got to say, you know, part of me agrees with him when I'm just thinking, this is massive mini solar system. We'd know, wouldn't we? Wouldn't we? But it's, I go back. I think the devil's very clever. They knew exactly where it's going to be in the planets. And maybe they're a bit behind. Then, you know, it's possible and when I look at all this other stuff but he you know he you know he's he's got to have a theory for what if he's not Nibiru then what is it and he hasn't really got one although I think it's on a premise that um, there's something coming out of the center of the galaxy that may be c cyclical I know Cliff High he doesn't really talk about Nibiru, but he talks about this bloop theory that it wasn't the Big Bang, it was the little bloops. And every 22 trillion times a second, the universe creates little bloops. And that's how things kind of change, and maybe that's cyclical in a way. I mean, there's a thing about increasing frequencies. Uh, if, if, they, if it's quite interesting if, if you put some grains of salt or something on a piece of paper and you uh, fire some sound at it uh, and you increase the frequency of the sound the salt crystals sort of change shape in, amongst each other make little shapes and as you increase the frequency gradually every now and then they change shape suddenly so there is that possibility but it doesn't it doesn't explain the pole shift it doesn't explain the magnetics particularly and it certainly doesn't fit in with any of the religious stuff you know it, to me it's hard to make that work it's hard to make it work without <laughs> without Nibiru uh, someone else left a comment about me about on my last video um, saying I think I did follow up his links but it was a bit difficult to know what, what it was exactly but I think it was basically saying that Jesus and all of them are bad guys I think that's what they were saying and they might even been saying that Satan is actually the best of them Lucifer the light pair I've heard that uh, I don't buy it I think people who think this haven't read the Bible or they've read snippets or they've read bad versions because there are some weird versions so King James you read Jesus's words it's wisdom it's amazing it's you know the way to happiness is through charity there's one and it's so true you go and do something good for someone and you feel really good it's so true uh, love your neighbour <laughs> that's the commandment isn't it anyway Jesus everything he's ever said and it's brilliant fantastic and I think these people who believe in that they're, they're just they haven't they just I think you've got to read the Bible because it's the one thing that you know has been around for a long time you hear about stuff like the emerald tablets well I've seen the tablets but and I've, heard, I've read it maybe it's true I mean that that could be for another time it's quite way beyond so I'm just saying you know if, like something new comes out you know you don't know but with the Bible 
it's been changed, but you know there's something to it. So if you're interested, the Bible is a must read, I think. Um, I can't really think of it like the other theories of things, but yeah, so I don't, I'm not going to say anything more about that. Right, coming on to the present day, um, and really, you know, what what should we do with this information? Um, I want to talk about what I've written down here, which is protesting achieves what? Let's let's start talking about Egypt. They had a protest, and they kicked out their leader. And they forced him to leave. The army would not kill the protesters, and that was that was a good step. It was good. So they changed their leader, but I don't think the new leader is any different from the old leader, except he's newer same system and you know I don't know why people demand democracy perhaps if you've lived in a dictatorship you think democracy is better I think we're beginning to realize that democracy is not a democracy at all they're basically able to put in whoever they like well it might not be whoever they like but if there's two people who've got a chance of winning you can bet that they will have put those two people in place. And maybe even when they win power, you know, all this, the good stuff they've been talking up, maybe they even believe that they're going to do some good. But blimey, do they change when they get into power? Maybe it's because they learn something as soon as they get into power, but by that time it's too late. They can't. They can't get out of it without death, like Kennedy. So they go with it. Here we go, they're forced by the beast. So, protesting, you know, if the best we could achieve from protesting is to change the leader, then, then it's pointless. And it's very unlikely to be able to do that. I mean, Turkey, they're having protests. Brazil are having protests, uh, you know, what do the governments do? Well, they spray them with water and bash them around a bit and spray pepper spray in the face. And they carry on. We had an Occupy movement in this country. They first of all went to the financial district, but then they got moved on. Or oh, go over to St. Paul's instead. Should never have got moved on. Should never have allowed it. And I think this country at the moment is trying to avoid protests. Um, it seems, I mean, things are bad, but they're not that bad. I don't think they want the city of London stopped. I think that's a very important area in the world. I think it's the centre of something. But it's the central financial district. But anyway... What does protesting achieve? Um, even going back to France, the French Revolution, where they ate the nobles. Uh, you know, I think I think they've probably got that slightly wrong as well. I don't know. France is an interesting place. It does seem a bit better than the rest. But I think in this day and age. Walking out in the streets is, you know, the only. It's not good if it gets violent. It's not. It's not good. This doesn't help us. Well, I think where we should protest is, is by what we do every day. Who do we serve every day? Well, if you work for a big company. And buy products with the mark of the beast on, the barcode, then you're supporting the beast, you're serving the beast. 
So we're all, most of us, all of us are supporting the beast. Um, for the last week or so, I've, uh, I've avoided buying stuff with barcode on. I'm not going to be able to avoid it completely. I, I think I bought three items with a barcode on, but absolutely most of it from the farm shop. And I even went to the shop the other day and said, you got anything without any barcodes on? He's like, oh, I've got these chocolate flapjacks. Like, oh, that'll do, thank you. I feel a lot better, actually. If there's anything with a barcode on, if you've got a product that you make and you end up getting it barcoded, you've, you've reached that sort of level. You know, you have you have to conform with regulations which are not always good. Um, so, yeah, I think, you know, that that is really what we could do to stop supporting the beast. And... Um, you know, it's hard, but maybe we can just do it less, um, and try. You know, and then and then say, I know people who make bread, maybe try and get your flour not from a place who's got it barcode. Let's start. You know, let's start being self-sufficient. That if we have to, if society comes down. Then that's you know that's what we'd have to do. Okay, um, move on from that. Trickery to come. This is the last piece. The last thing I'm going to talk about. Again, you know, a lot of my predictions don't turn out to be true, but I really think now what we have to watch out for is to be tricked. The beast wants us to think that the incoming Anunnaki are our enemies, when in fact the opposite is true. The beast, the beast is the enemy to us, and the incoming Anunnaki are trying to help us. And I think I've been helped by one. I'll say his name. John Barron. I don't think he's fully human. <laughs> He's amazing. Um, he's given on his website all the information about what the human body needs. And he's he's put it all there. He's, he's done all the facts. You know, I don't know where he got these facts from. But when you read it, when you hear truth, it hits you in the head. It's the truth that just hit you. Other information can fly around, fly by, the truth smacks you right there. Anyway, so, <clears throat> yeah, I think they're, they're on the planet too, but seeing as the beast has got 20,000 nukes aimed at our heads, they've, um, they've obviously got to be careful. It's like that situation, isn't it? And, uh, yeah, I think, you know, there was a video of, um, was it, it was over Russia or Japan. There was this UFO just sitting there, and then you see this missile go towards it. Oh, no, there was two. One in Russia, uh, UFO sort of there, and then you see this missile shoot, fly out and miss. And then you've got this one in Japan, and there's this UFO sitting there, and then you see this missile come slowly towards it, slowly, slowly, slowly. And you can see the people filming it are, like, really not wanting it to hit. They're really like, oh, no, don't hit, like, sort of thing. And then the UFO just stays there, but the missile sort of just seems to slowly deplete and disappear. <laughs> so... Good will win. Good will win out. Don't worry about that. But there's going to be some trickery. 
they've got this whole thing now with people uh, saying that um, they're going to resurrect Pope John Paul and he's going to be like the Jesus and there's these people have been warned about this for ages something about the the coming of Jesus will be after the rapture after the big catastrophe not before so apparently this trickery will be before but who knows it's in the future they change it they listen to our YouTube and then they change it <laughs> or they do it so subtly that no one finds out Bilderberg I'm just I'm still trying to find out if the people left in there on Saturday night if they all got out because who knows if they did because the last the latest video from that day I saw was a guy who sort of walked out of the entrance, sort of didn't mean to, and was just saying goodbye to his mate or something, was going to go back in, and then the police were like, no, you've left now, sorry, you've had a chance, go. And Alex Jones and his entourage had already left. There was a video with his um, geezer in England saying, oh, oh yeah, we got, <laughs> yeah, we got to go, got to be up early in the morning, got BBC. Sorry, it wasn't a very good impression. <laughs> anyway, so they left. Understandably, Alex Jones has to get up in the morning, do the BBC. But his um, English minion, he he didn't, he wasn't on the telly, so he didn't have to, did he? Could have partied. Anyway, they didn't. They left. This guy got chucked out. wasn't Didn't get chucked out, but as soon as he left, wasn't allowed back in. And you see them. They were different police, all lined up, wearing these blue caps. You know, did everyone get out? Still haven't found out if that did. I, I made another prediction that um, <laughs> something was going to happen at the Olympic Games. And there was a lot of that. I kind of thought they were going to wipe a lot of people out. And I said they were going to do a biological attack because you've got people all from different countries and maybe they did but maybe it's on a small scale and maybe these diseases had a very long incubation period but anyway probably didn't I was probably just wrong of course that happens but there's going to be some trickery to come we've already seen a video of what looks like a fairy a big fairy an angel if you like flying in between two clouds look fake to me so yeah be careful of the bullshit that is to come the invading aliens <laughs> they're not bad if they were bad we would have been wiped out already if they wanted this earth they would have got rid of us already okay careful the beast is clever and um Try and get your head screwed on. Don't think too much about money and sex. Seems that it's quite hard to get away from it. There we go. Practice meditation. Practice your telepathy. Start visioning things. Ask questions of anything start to recognize your subconscious that's my advice stop thinking I'm mad if you do and start accepting that the world is mad and what it's doing thank you